Good morning, everyone. I just had to check in with you first thing today since it's Monday and we are cruising right in to the meat of our program, weeks three, four, and five. Um, these are the most important weeks, especially, especially since next week is, well, no, next week I'm out of town, you guys, but obviously you'll still be hearing from me. But the week after that, um, we've got Thanksgiving. So I really want you, if you have not taken some time to remember why you signed up for this. Remember your why. What was your fifth why? If you have not done the five whys exercise, that's your first thing that you need to do today. Tell your boss that you cannot hop on that conference call until you figure out why you are doing Live to Get Lean. Now, remember your why. Um, think about what it is that you're trying to accomplish. So you've got your why, and then I want you to think about your outcome-based goal. What am I trying to achieve here? And then in regards to this morning's post, what the heck am I gonna do to actually get there? So our outcome-based goals are awesome. It's great to have like our eyes on the prize, but what, but what is better than an outcome-based goal is a behavior-based goal. Today, I am gonna have four ounces of protein at each of my main meals. Today, I'm gonna have vegetables at lunch and dinner. Today, my snacks are this and that, not this and that. So action is where it's at, you guys. We gotta do the stuff to get the thing. So keep doing the stuff so you can get your thing. In addition to that, before I talk, uh, jump into today's talk, I wanna talk about something real briefly in regards to eating enough. So you may have heard a term called starvation mode. Starvation mode is not a thing. Your body is not going to, like, it's not really a thing. What our body does do though, you may have heard me talk about this before, it adapts. We are highly adaptable creatures. That is why we are able to survive anything. Your body will adapt to whatever it is you give it. So when you don't give it enough, it can learn to operate on that. So you know I'm not a big fan of 1200 calorie diets unless you are, you know, four foot seven and that you weigh 120 pounds. I don't think that is anybody in this group. Maybe Sarah. Sarah, you're really small. But you can live off of that. Let's say that you are a 5 foot 10, 160 pound woman. If you are only feeding yourself 1,200 calories, your body is going to adapt to that. How does it adapt to that? It slows down. All the processes in your body start to slow down. Um, you, you, obviously, it's going to mess with your hormones or things like that. But your body adapts to it. And it stops doing certain things that aren't necessary, like your hair gets gross, your nails don't grow, things like that. But you adapt to that. We don't want to adapt to a lower level of calories. What we want is our bodies to be super gas guzzling machines. Instead of it being a, um, a super efficient car, we want to be a gas guzzling pickup truck. Okay, that's what you want your body to be. So when you're not hitting your calories, just know this, you're not doing yourself any favors, okay? So continue to work to hit those macros. That's why we look at your macros and not your percentages, plus or minus five. When we see that you're hitting your macros plus or minus five, I know that you're fueling your body the way that you should be fueling your body. Um, it's, it's just super important. We don't have to starve ourselves in order to get what we want. We don't have to at all. That is such an old school way of thinking. And I just want to remind you guys that we don't have to be hungry in order to reach our goals. Yeah, sometimes we are going to get hungry. Yeah, you know, if you're in a fat loss phase, there's a really good chance you're going to feel hunger sometimes. But we don't always have to be hungry. So that's we're going to talk more about that towards the latter end of our program when I talk about how to calculate your own macros, what's a reverse diet, why should I do carb cycling and things of that nature. But just know that when you don't eat enough, when you don't hit your macros, when you're constantly under, you're not doing yourself any favors. You're not gonna lose the weight any faster. Or if you do lose the weight faster, what happens when you, have, when you can't eat 1,200 calories because you are so hungry? Something to think about. Now, today, you've heard me talking about using the voice in your head that is a wise, loving caregiver. 
Today, we're gonna talk about that just a little bit. On Saturday morning's post, I said, sometimes we feel like it's not fair. Like, why am I the only one at this party that's not having all the little, um, <laughs> what are those little hot dogs? Those little, shoot, those little teeny weeny things. You know, why am I the only one that's not eating like 20,000 of those? Why am, I, why am I the only one that's having just two cocktails instead of six? Why am I the only one not having a piece of birthday cake at this party? And it's not like my own child's birthday party. Sometimes we feel that it's not fair, but that is just either our inner toddler talking, throwing a fit, or our rebellious teenager. We have all these three voices in our head. Whiny toddler, why do I have to do it? Rebellious teenager, screw that. I've been really, really good. I'm gonna have whatever I want. Or a wise, caring, uh, a wise and loving caregiver. You know what, Kylie? I understand that you really want another teeny weeny right now, but is that really in your best interest? What do you really want? So when you're making your conscious decisions, which is what we want, we don't wanna be reactive, we wanna be proactive, listen to those voices in your head and make sure the one that you are responding to and really listening to is your wise inner caregiver. So I'll give you a couple of examples. What stinks is the voice, we have a voice that we kind of gravitate towards that's our, that's giving us our same old story. So it could, it, your same old story could sound something like this. I'm going to give you a few examples. Number one, which we just talked about, in order to lose weight slash be healthy, I have to deprive myself. Number two, this deprivation should be very strict and I need to make a lot of rules or else I'm not going to reach my goals. Number three, these rules, they're gonna be all or nothing rules and if I break the rules even just a little bit, then I am bad and I've gone off plan. Number four, once I am off plan, screw it, I'm just gonna eat whatever I want. That's a rebellious teenager. Ugh, I feel awful. I probably need more rules, right? That'll fix everything. In order to lose weight and be healthy, I have to deprive myself even more. All this is, is a cycle. It's a vicious, vicious cycle. Deprivation, um, breaking rules, feeling like crap for breaking the rules, more deprivation. Nothing about this feels good, right? Even saying that out loud makes me feel gross inside. So it's a lousy story that's gonna repeat itself over and over and over again until you learn how to break out of that cycle. So deprivation, restriction, and all these quote unquote food rules they seem like they should work, right? In theory, they should work, but they don't because we're humans and we don't respond well to that kind of structure, if you will. Here's why. You cannot bully or belittle anyone into changing, including yourself. No, not pigs in a blanket. It's something real funny. Um, so being extra, sick, extra strict and self-blaming does not work. And think about it. I hope that you've never done this to your spouse and that your spouse has never done it to you. But if anyone has ever told you, like your spouse or a boyfriend or a girlfriend, um, wow, you're really gonna eat that? Do you think that's a smart choice? How does that make you feel? Uh, don't say that to yourself either. Don't, and you can't say to anybody else. Um, here's another reason this doesn't work. Our bodies are evolved mechanisms to prevent starvation. So while we don't go into starvation mode, systems do slow down. So these mechanisms, they're gonna shape your thoughts and your feelings and they cause you to rebel because your body wants more. When you deprive yourself, you want it even more. When you go on a diet, the hormones that regulate your satiety and your hunger, they change. The less you eat, the hungrier you get, obviously. But also the less you eat, the more it takes you to feel full. So when you go on a diet, you are set up to fail right off the bat. This is why diets do not work. And then finally, underlying this sort of behavior is I am deprived. And when we feel deprived, we feel that we can rebel or treat ourselves with by eating forbidden foods. So that is why this is just a vicious, vicious cycle. Little Smokies, they're little Smokies, Lorena. <laughs> it just came to me. Now, if we focus on this all or nothing um, behavior or all or nothing oriented thoughts, I can never eat carbs. All of the carbs are bad. 
We look at carbs as a forbidden fruit, so then we like fantasize about them. We dream about eating candy. We dream about eating bread and bagels when we know we could just have some bread or some bagels. It's not that big deal, big of a deal, right? We have to have this abundance mentality around our food. Otherwise, we fall into this I'm deprived, I deserve mentality. <clears throat> so just think, if this story sounds familiar to you, how is it working? Are you where you want to be? Is this cycle of deprivation, falling off the tracks, feeling bad about yourself, depriving even more, is it getting you where you want to go? If it is, keep doing it. But if it's not, let's start to change that voice in our head. So think about the, the wise, care, nurturing caregiver voice that you have. What is he or she going to say to you, right? When you mess up, they don't beat you down. They don't talk about what a horrible person you are and they don't give you more rules. In fact, think about the mom or whomever, the parent that is super strict. What do super strict parents, what do their kids act like? They rebel, right? The minute they go to college, they're drinking all the alcohol because they're finally away and they can do whatever they want. But if you have more uh, parents that are a little bit more moderate in terms of, you know, their strictness, like there's rules, but it's not too strict. Those kids are able, they've learned how to make good decisions. So they don't necessarily turn into binge. <laughs> this is maybe not the best example, but binge drinkers in college or whatever. Right. But we also don't want to be the parent that has zero rules. We don't want to be the house that all the kids come to because we know that so-and-so's mom is going to let us drink all the alcohol in the basements. I mean, it's cool to have that mom sometimes, but that's not really who we want as our caregiver. So we have to find that balance. Here's what I want you to do today, and I will type this in the description. Think about your same old stories about food, eating, drinking, and your body. What is your script for how this whole thing should work? Do you expect to feel deprived? Um, do you make strict and stringent plans? Do you deny yourself certain foods, but then rebound on it later? Uh, do you engage in all or nothing thinking? We've already talked about this. Does your inner, inner dialogue about food make you sound younger than 18? Do you criticize yourself harshly? And... This, this is the one that everyone needs to think about. If you wrote down what your inner voice was saying, would you let that inner voice anywhere near your own daughter or son? That is something I want everyone to seriously think about. And then two, once you capture your stories and review them, write down your thoughts about scripts, food, eating, and your body, then read them or say them out loud so you can see them and hear them. And um, when you see them and hear them, it might help you see how, I don't wanna say ridiculous, but how hard you're being on yourself. I'll tell you, one of the best things for me has been coaching people and hear them say out loud the thoughts that I have thought and realizing, oh my gosh, we cannot talk to ourselves that way. So. It's one thing to think it, but when you write it down and say it out loud, you can realize how harsh it is. And then finally, our last two things, test your stories and your inner voice assumptions. Like, are those stories true? Do I really have a fat face? Um, can I not ever eat carbs? Do, do, do eating carbs really make me fat or is it just I'm eating too much that's making me not reach my goals? What's working well for you? Why is that working well for you? What's not working? Why is that story not working for you? and which of your stories and scripts need to change. And then finally, call your wise inner caregiver, not actually on the phone, but in your head. Remember, mean mother, or think like wicked stepmother, beating, beating yourself up and being extra strict isn't helping things. Um, and don't care mother, going hog wild in a binge, that's also not helping you either. Both of those people are lousy parents. So call on that middle ground, that wise inner caregiver. And what would that person, how would they advise you the next time you're feeling in a situation where you want to rebel or you feel like it's not fair? How can you channel your mature, honest 
yet compassionate inner grown up to help you make thoughtful and responsible choices. Because that's what we want. We want to make choices that are in alignment with our goals. Those choices are going to be thoughtful and responsible. So we are in control of the actions that we take and the choices that we make. And, and once you you find that sort of balance, you're going to you're going to get to where it is you want to go. It might take a while, but you using the same old script and stories is only you're not going anywhere. You're going in a circle. So why not start to move forward with changing that inner dialogue? So again, I will type up these last few things up in the comments so you can journal about this. Take some time to really, really think about it. We'll talk more about self-compassion, and this is going to be a huge thing for a lot of us. Um, we are so hard on ourselves, and it's not working. So what can we do about it? we got to change it. You guys, have an amazing Monday. We'll be in touch this afternoon and tonight. And if you are feeling lost at all, you need something, let us know so that we can help you. Later on this week, we're going to be talking about like, what does progress look like? How do I know if I'm doing this right? How do I know that it's working? Um, so less information coming your way, but more things to put into place. You know the carbs, fats, and proteins. You know how to track your macros. Um, we'll get a little bit more into mindset work and, and, and things like that. So have an awesome afternoon, you guys, and I'll talk to you soon.